Good evening, folks. This is Andy Pedraza with Special Effects Academy. We're on the March 28th start of the week session in the Forex trading room. As usual, we will be going through our regular agenda, look at the prior week, our currency strength meter, fundamental announcements on the calendar, a look at the major pairs on the dailies, any setups we see in progress, and a few words in conclusion. Starting with our ledger, and I'll advance this for all of it, it's been a pretty flat week, so there wasn't any significant changes, a few trades closed, a few trades open, but no, uh, no major change in any of the accounts. Uh, we are finishing our fiscal year this week, so that is the end of fiscal year 2020. We run from April through the end of March, that is our usual fiscal year. And indeed, uh, the way we calculate fiscal years, actually last week was the end of the uh, fiscal. Uh, this week uh, that starts today actually belongs to April, even though we're still technically in calendar March. So we will be producing results for the year. And uh, pretty much the results you're going to see on your screen are the results for the full year at this point, though I will make sure there are no revisions that need to be made. So long-term ledger, at this point, we're down 10%. Uh, intermediate ledger, also uh, trades open. This was one of the hardest hit accounts. Uh, we, uh, we lost in excess of uh, 65%, uh, almost 70% on this account. And again, this is what real trading looks like. It doesn't always go in a single direction. The beauty of it is the way we're trading and a risk control and this, that, and the other, we always have the opportunity to recover and, and we will recover. So uh, this will come back. Uh, I've been saying this for many years now as I've made profit every single year, that eventually we're going to be having a bad year. And uh, 2020 was definitely the bad year. And of course, mitigating circumstances, we had a global pandemic, we had upset US elections, everything that could possibly go wrong in the market went wrong. That's not me making up excuses. It's just relating the facts. It is what it is. But again, we're uh, still healthy as regards capital in the accounts, and we will be coming back from this. I can almost guarantee that. So be patient. Better things are coming. The short-term account also had a, uh, a pretty hefty hit. Uh, I'm not going to deny that. Uh, I guess the account that fared the best was the long-term account. And of course, measuring by something artificial like a week or a month or a calendar year is uh is not really the whole story because you know we can have uh, immense profits the week after the year ended and that just won't count at all but again uh we will be taking measures to come back from this uh, in due course notes and opportunities for improvement mostly flat week we are closing out our fiscal year as i just said We'll also be rebalancing the accounts this week and uh, seeing what new rules we need to institute. And of course, as I said, fiscal 2021 begins today. Relative strength meter for the past week, uh, we had the yen all the way at the very end. The yen continues to gain strength, but much smaller movement than last week. Uh, the Kiwi had a complete and just absolute collapse, which I think is going to be good for a rebound at some point. The dollar continued moving into strength. I, I wouldn't call it a massive move, but it did fare well, especially towards the end of the week. Uh, than the other currencies, but definitely the bigger mover was the uh, Kiwi, followed by the dollar, followed by the Aussie, and then we had uh, the, the yen, the CAD, and the pound gain a little bit, but not as much as the others won or lost, and the euro and the Swiss were essentially flat for the week. Fundamental announcements for this week that is beginning. All we have on the calendar is the non-farm payroll on Friday, so we will be trading that live, the uh, labor report out of the U.S. And with that, we move on to the charts. Commodities, we had oil doing a little bit of a roller coaster there, and of course, one of the major impacts to oil price was this issue with that uh, ship that got, um, that blocked the Suez Canal over there in Egypt. Uh, making uh, all of the uh, shipping traffic in the region just come to a standstill for more than a week. It is finally getting cleared as I record this, so it looks like by tomorrow morning, uh, traffic will be flowing once more, but now there is a backlog of about 450 to 500 ships just waiting to get through. It's going to take weeks to clear that backlog as far as uh, I know. 
And of course, a good deal of global shipping goes through that canal, including oil. So there was a little bit of a fear that oil would be affected and the market reflected that. But ultimately, even though it tried to drop, it came back up. It was a relatively flat week for oil. Uh, Euro dollar is uh, dropping. So and, and indeed, we saw this in the uh, relative strength meter chart that the uh, dollar was recovering on Friday, it started to move against the dollar. We'll have to see how this new week begins. Um, but right now, it looks like the uh, dollar pairs were retracing towards their previous levels of support resistance, depending which way that um, that pair was, uh, was headed. Um, but we do have some dollar strength returning into the market. We can see that on the pound dollar as well, except that the, um, the dollar recovery ended on Wednesday. Thursday and Friday was pound recovery and it moved significantly back up from where it still ended the week below its open, but uh, more than halfway back up. So all in all, the uh, pound staged a pretty good recovery towards the end. USDJPY moving further and further into dollar strength yen weakness. The yen had a, uh, um, a very poor showing against the dollar. So it's now at the topmost level, uh, a price level, oops, I'm sorry. I moved to the previous chart by accident. Okay, so the yen, the USDJPY is at a previous level of resistance not seen since all the way back a year ago in May, late April, May of 2020. Uh, almost a year, not quite a year, but pretty much uh, for all intents and purposes. So we not only had a breakout from the bottom, we have just a complete route uh, and, and it looks like it's not stopping anytime soon. USD Canadian continues following that trend line down. So we are having uh, the CAD continue to gain strength against the dollar, except that it is in retrace mode. So the last couple of weeks, it's been moving against the Canadian in favor of the dollar. And this week, it did hit the trend line and bounced off of it on Friday. So as far as I'm concerned, this is still a very bearish chart, but of course it will have retraces along the way and the past couple of weeks was definitely a retrace period. USD Swiss continues on uh, the uh, dollar strength, Swiss weakness making a higher high at long last this week. Uh, not a much higher high than what it did uh, a month or so back, but it's still, it's moving consistently up. So we are having the dollar hold itself. Aussie dollar also moving into dollar strength, but it stopped on Wednesday, Thursday and did a creditable, credible, I should say, a recovery on Friday. Didn't quite um, attack the, uh, the previous drop, but did make inroad. So again, another one, we'll have to see how this week begins. And uh, Kiwi dollar pretty much did the same thing, drop, but then came back up on Friday. However, it had a massive drop on Tuesday, which pretty much killed it for the week. Well, but again, we'll see. I think there's still some good opportunities to trade this back into dollar weakness. And some of these pairs that were harder hit in the past couple of weeks will also be giving us a really, really good opportunity for getting all those pips if the uh, dollar weakness does come back. Aussie Canadian, another dropper, but Thursday, Friday was recovery. Didn't end up anywhere near where it started. So it was still a bearish week, but it is moving back towards resistance. Euro Swiss uh, has gone flat now for the past uh, more than a month, I would say. I still think it's going to be heading for, towards the top at some point, but it is doing it at its own sweet. Euro Pound testing the bottom again, 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 and again. Hasn't been able to breach it, so support is holding, and we are trying to trade this one back up. Thursday, Friday killed the profit we were carrying on the open trade, but we're still in the trade and we're waiting to see if it does start coming back up in our direction. Euro JPY almost but not quite at the top. Uh, it was a dropper for the uh, first half of the week and then uh, Thursday it stopped and Friday was a really, really nice recovery, moving about a little bit more than halfway back up to where it had started. Euro Canadian, much like the Euro pound, just testing the bottom a few times, not being able to pierce. Also, I think a good opportunity for a retracement back into that blue channel that we have around the middle of the chart. Time will tell. 
Pound JPY trying to break the top yet again, mostly on yen weakness. Um, pound strength has been there as well, but yen weakness has been the flavor of the week. So pretty nice move up for the week. Aussie JPY also, uh, thanks to the yen weakness, coming back up quite nicely from where it started the week. Ending rather flat, but still, it, it does tell me that there is still some really good pressure towards the top, uh, which may indeed break the top and keep going. Euro New Zealand did a massive move up on, again, Kiwi weakness. That was one of the bigger movers this week was the Kiwi. But uh, it stopped on Wednesday, then Thursday, Friday started to recover. We did go into this pair late in the week because I think there's a pretty good opportunity to trade it back down. I think whatever was ailing the Kiwi was pretty much over by the time Wednesday, Thursday rolled around. So again, we'll see what happens with this. What we are going to do, just to let you guys know, since we are starting a new fiscal, we will be closing out all the ledgers and they will remain as historical evidence of what happened. But the open trades, they will be moved into the new ledgers for the new fiscal year. So we'll just be carrying the open trades over. Uh, trade will not be um, considered to be part of a fiscal year until it is closed. When it's closed, it will be owned by whatever fiscal year, and now it's fiscal year 2021. Uh, Pound Canadian, nice recovery Friday, uh, Thursday into Friday. Ending the week pretty flat. I think it moved a very small amount, uh, if at all, but pretty much ended where it began the week. Pound Swiss, another one breaking or trying to break the top yet again. It did end the week above the final level of resistance, but it did do a, a significant retrace back towards that new level of support. Now, old resistance, new support. So we're still waiting for a higher high than previous and for it to keep going. Pound Aussie breaking out of the wedge, but on Friday coming back down and ending the week right inside, just a hair's breadth inside that wedge. So it's still a bullish chart, even though it went uh, massively sideways for a while. It still looks like it's making higher highs and higher lows following the trend line up. So again, give this one time. It looks like we're going to have a good opportunity to trade it back up. Next week, this is the end of the charts. Next week, uh, for the start of the week, we're going to be looking at monthly charts as we set up our, uh, our charts for the uh, new fiscal year. So we're going to look at a much longer bird's eye view of the market. So stay tuned for that. I'm probably not going to be making that session public as it has a little bit of proprietary information there. But of course, if you are a subscriber, that does not affect you. You will get a recording of that session. But for everybody else, you may not see a video next weekend. Uh, that would be for April 4th. Um, we'll probably be skipping that week. I may post something, but it certainly won't be my, uh, my yearly um, outlook forecast, uh, whatever you want to call it, that will be for subscribers only. Setups we see in progress, the pound pairs, the pound is still very close to a three-year three high in holding the uh, dollar pairs sideways with a slight recovery. Australian is still struggling to maintain strength, but it's not giving up. It's not retreating, so it's still there. Uh, the yen had a small rally the week before last, but it quickly fizzled this week, just um, uh, especially against uh, the pound and the dollar, the, the yen just collapsed, so... Um, it, it's really not catching a break. Still don't know why, but it's not. And the Canadian, still trending bullish. Going in fits and starts, and of course, very susceptible to the movements in oil price, but it is still trying to uh, to gain strength. Uh, I know it lost ground against the dollar, but I think that was just a, a standard retrace from a technical perspective to that trend line and we are going to see it start going down pretty soon and my parting words of course time for review and i said this at the top of the call this week marked the end of our fiscal year here at special effects trading which owns special effects academy so fiscal year 2020 is over and we are beginning fiscal year 2021 for the record our fiscal year begins at the uh beginning of april 
and ends at the end of March of the following year. It was a challenging year, to say the least, and while there were opportunities, there were also pitfalls and reversals along the way. Trading carries risk. We've always kept that front and center. The beauty of trading the right way, however, is that there's always another day. So long as you don't blow up your account, you always live to fight another day. And we will be rebalancing the accounts and reviewing the good and the bad. We will see that in, in next week's session. We'll do a full, uh, full review of that. And we will be instituting some changes better designed to uh, trade the current market environment. Obviously, uh, we didn't factor in a global pandemic when, when we started the, uh, the fiscal year. Uh, shame on us. We should have predicted that, but we didn't. And, um, and we didn't imagine it was going to last for an entire year. So basically, our entire fiscal year was uh, under the shadow of COVID. Uh, so that wasn't in our outlook, but now it is here. So we adapt. And, and that is the message. Traders trade, markets change and evolve. Traders do the same. We as traders have to change and evolve with the market because the market is not going to adapt to what we're doing. We're the ones who have to adapt to the market. So that's what we'll be doing this week. Uh, we'll be trading as normal, but it is a new fiscal year. But in the background, I'll be setting things up so we can have a proper review of the entire year next weekend when we do our start of the week, which is really going to be start of the uh, fiscal year. Um, and again, for those of you who are not subscribers, I apologize in advance, but you will not be getting a session next week. Um, so that's that. That is the end of my spiel for today. And I will catch you guys uh, tomorrow, Monday, on our first trading session. Again, assuming you're subscribers. If not, the rest of you, I love you all, but I'll see you in about two weeks. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.